and collapse. And I wonder, looking at Mecca, will they put transgendered bathrooms in there? See, see nobody asked Saudi Arabia to take the refugees caused by the wars they've been starting. It's just sick how they guilt us, the West, that's so open-minded into submitting to all this craziness. Chuck Baldwin, there is an awakening happening to this. And I think the establishment's smoking a lot of its own dope. I want to go to some phone calls in this segment and the next. There's a whole other hour coming up, fourth hour with Rob Dew uh, and others and David Knight and uh, you name it, hosting. But, but, but Chuck Baldwin, how does the left work with radical Islam that would slit their throat in a minute? I guess that just shows the true hate is of Christianity and freedom. Yeah, I don't think there's any question that the secularists in general have a disdain against Christianity and Christian principles. And I, I do believe that there is a, a correlation there. And I think that, that the, the fact that America was founded by Christian men largely, mostly, and that the, the fundamental tenets of our Bill of Rights and, and the principles of our Constitution and especially our Declaration of Independence are all founded and framed on Christian principles and on biblical principles and natural law principles. I think that the men and women who reject those ideals have a, a natural propensity to reject Christianity in general because they know that that's the basis of our liberties and of our freedoms. And if you are tyrannical in nature, uh, if you are dictatorial in nature, then obviously you have to cut to the root of that which is the source of liberty and freedom. And that, of course, is the principles of, of the Bible and the principles of natural law. And so we, I think that there is a natural tendency on the part of the people you're describing to target Christianity. I don't think there's any doubt about it. And it's a complete double standard because everything that they're denying Christians, they are readily uh, acquiescing to Muslims here in the United States. Well, that's States. the thing about political correctness. It's all selectively enforced. Feminists can have sex with whoever they want, objectify men, but you can't do it to them. I mean, it's just it's just sick. And you look how bad a shape women are in now. It's just crazy. Pete in Indiana, you want to talk about 9-11. Go ahead. It is the 14th anniversary. I just wanted to comment. 9-11 is now commemorated as Patriots Day. And the irony of that is that since 9-11 and since the wars we've been involved in and since uh, our police have been militarized, that... Uh, Patriots Day is more like a slap in the face to people who are patriots. and Exactly. Patriots Day sense. is April 19th. They now call this the new Patriots Day, and they talk about those that died, but not about those that died from the dust, not the prior knowledge, how it's been used to take our liberties. Absolutely. Chuck Baldwin, what do you think of 14 years after 9-11? I think that there's more questions unanswered than there are answered. I mean, I, you know, when I was traveling around 2008 as a candidate for president of the United States on the Constitution Party, I was asked that question quite a bit, and my standard response was, I'd just like for somebody in authority with some kind of, of documentation and scientific evidence to show me why Building 7 collapsed. I mean, we can't even get a, a straight answer from anybody. On I the talked to the deputy emergency manager. Now. He said they blew it up, and he was dead two weeks after he was on. Uh, Pete. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying nobody in, in an official capacity, nobody that, you know, they, they could have a, a – a real part in bringing some uh, solution closure. to the minds and closure to the minds and the hearts, especially the families of these victims, has even come close to providing a, a closure on any of this, including the most simple question about Building 7. So I think what we're dealing with 14 years later is the fact that more and more people are waking up and realizing that the, the official story just doesn't jive. There's more questions than, than there are answers, and the official story doesn't make sense. Sure. There's a, and and, and now... Up. The former head of defense intelligence and the former deputy head of the CIA came out and said our government runs al-Qaeda and ISIS and is protecting them and Obama's covering it up with Saudi Arabia. I mean, we got a coup in this country by Saudi Arabia, folks. I'm not saying entirely, but nobody talks ECN. about them. And boy, when we do, Visit let me tell you, they don't ECN like it. Live. We're going to be right back. Stay with us. Infowars.com. ChuckBaldwinLive.com. Take your phone calls for Chuck Baldwin. I'm Alex Jones. Mike in California, you're on the air. Go ahead. Perspective for a long time, and I don't know if, if either you understand what the actual issue is in this world, or if maybe you're just not giving it to the to the people. Because the truth is, the reason why this has been happening in this country and pretty much all over the West is because people just don't believe in God anymore. And so the truth is that the war is on God. It's a war on God, not a war on Christianity. 
So, you know, you're always talking about being, uh, you're not anti-Islam, you're not Islamophobic. But the truth is that you either come off as um, ingenuous or you're ignorant about Muslim culture because, you know, um, I converted and I've been to a Muslim country before and I've seen what it actually produces. And Muslim people are actually people of faith. Let me ask you a question. Can I, can I, yeah. can I preach Christianity on the streets of uh, Saudi Arabia? Uh, as far as I know, not, not that I know, but see, here's the issue. No, you there. can't. In fact, it's an you executable push, offense. You can you teach Islam on the streets of California? Okay. You talk about Saudi Arabia. You didn't answer my like question. Saudi here's what I don't like. I give Islam, and I know a lot of Muslims that are nice people, in a lot of ways they're more moral than what we've got here in this country. So I don't judge Muslims across the board, and I try to stop them from being invaded. I try to stop them from being taken over by the globalists and the class of civilizations. But the truth is radical Islam is being allowed to take over and being allowed to persecute Christians, and I'm sick of it, and I'm tired of it, and I'm standing up for Christians. Now I want to give Chuck Ball a response to what you said, Mike, and I'll let you comment back. Well, he obviously doesn't know me very well and he hasn't read too much of what I have to say because I, I've, I'm one that has taken a lot of grief from the right on my statement that there are many, many, many peace-loving Muslim people here in this country and around the world. There are. And that our foreign policy, our aggressive war doctrine, our preemptive invasions, our drone attacks, etc., this New World Order machination that's being played out in the Middle East is doing more to create the radical Muslims that you're talking about. We are creating, we, we created ISIS through our CIA, of course. And I'll Yeah, and that, that is well. to disease the good Islam, I guess you're talking about, sir. So there can be a clash of civilizations. We have all the documents. So right. That's what I'm saying. So I, what I'm saying is it, the gentleman needs to understand that that my position, and I, I think yours too, is we're not talking about Muslims in general. And we're not even attack. I, at least I'm not. I'm not even attacking the Muslim faith per se. But the, the radical implementation of Islam in this country is a problem. And it's created by a, a New World Order doctrine, which is bent on controlling the entire Western world under one global environment. And that includes London, it includes Saudi Arabia, it includes the United States, it includes Israel. And whenever we stop and realize that the, that the fallout of this, the blowback, the CIA term of this, is this perpetual war that we see going on, and in order yeah. to fight the perpetual war, we've got to have a police state erected. Yeah, it's a global destabilization. States. Great point. Chuck Baldwin, we're almost out of time. I wanted to have okay. Mike be able to counter back. Uh, Mike, the truth is a lot of Muslims want to defend the fact that a lot of Islam has become totalitarian. I'm against totalitarianism across the board. And the truth is you can't preach Christianity in Saudi Arabia. You can preach Islam here. So that's what I was saying. You keep talking about Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia has no, no part of this. You, you make it seem like... Saudi Arabia pretty much runs Islam. No, that's not true because no Muslim that I know really believes that Saudi Arabia is in control of anybody. Everybody knows that the Saudis are a bunch of degenerates and they do not run Islam. They don't, they don't represent the Muslim community. And you see, you're always talking about how the Saudis have a hand in ISIS. Well, so does the West and so does Israel. So how, how all of a sudden uh, Saudi Arabia is a perpetrator? No, they're part of it, definitely. And the Muslim people Well, know sir, this. I mean, you yeah. say that we don't talk about a war on God here and you say that we don't expose other people involved. I've been doing that the whole show today. So you must have been listening to another show. Better check your dial. ChuckBaldwinLive.com. Chuck, powerful uh, interview. Thanks for the time. God bless you. Thank you, Alex. Coming up, Rob Dew hosts the rest of the show.